Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great to see you all of online today. So our topic for this uh, webinar today is global accounting services and crowd supporting technologies. Some practicalities uh, before we start. So you have a chat window there, so you can add your questions to that chat window and we can go through those and give our answer afterwards at the end of the webinar and also um, if and when you have registered uh, to the webinar and now all your attendees you will get all materials and this recording afterwards as well and if I start uh, from my end today, so my name is Terhi Kilpeläinen. I um, have been at Staria five years. And if we go to the slide as well, where we have, yes, ladies on the stage. Uh, so uh, I started here at Staria like five years ago, and I have been working uh, previously different uh, companies and different sizes um, and we, we we have had and i have had uh, in the past able to participate a different kind of uh, financial reorganization project and also erp and accounting um, implementation projects so nowadays, when I have been part of our Staria's um, uh, sales team and also global accounting team, I have had able to use my, my previous experience. Nowadays, I'm supporting our customers to reorganize uh, financial organization and also implementing different kind of sy systems, supporting uh, for example, now today, uh, digital workforce business operation. And um, so in practice, it means that I'm continuing uh, doing the same um, and working with the same topics, but I change to the another side of the table and have a different role as a service provider nowadays. Yeah. And then I, I'm I'm um, very pleased and uh, honored to honor to have a Haney on the stage as well today. So please, Haney, go ahead and tell your yeah. story. Thanks, Terhi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my name is Heini Kautonen. Uh, I'm the chief financial officer at Digital Workforce. Um, we are a, a global growth company, um, and um, as a company this size, um, anything basically fall, falls on my desk, and I'm I'm responsible for the whole uh, finance function uh, of the company. Um, before Digital Workforce, uh, I worked uh, at Solibri uh, for a couple of years uh, as a CFO, and then um, before that at, at Vincit uh, as a group controller so i've seen sort of multiple um system implementations and uh, and this um sort of fast growing um global uh global services um um in in many companies all right and then we go further so a few words about staria uh, to those who might not know who we are. So we have uh, around 600 uh, employees and we have a different um, and the, like offices in seven different countries. And we are delivering global accounting and payroll services. And also we are implementing a different kind of systems the most uh, famous system what we are implementing is NetSuite and we are the like the, the biggest uh, service provider and implementation partner at the Nordics 
uh, at the moment regarding NetSuite. Also, we are implementing a NetSuite related system and some other as well, but we go through those a little bit more detailed later on. And then Haney will tell something about and some more information about digital workforce. Yeah, yeah, please to do that. So um, those of you who don't know uh, digital workforce, um, we're sort of a global, very global business um, uh, process automation um, provider. Um, and um, we do or have started our business with, uh, with RPA. Uh, but now we are more moving into this end-to-end -end, um, business process automation. We are in the very center of this um, digitalization um, and um, trying to uh, serve our customers in the best possible way to, um, to design and to develop uh, their end-to-end um, uh, -end, uh, business processes. Um, and um, we have um, this uh, service called Outsmart, um, and it basically combines um, this RPA uh, that was just mentioned, then AI, and then this um, uh, common platform where we can combine uh, also then humans uh, into the loop in this process. Um, our uh, revenue last year um, was uh, 25.5 million. Um, we are around uh, 200 uh, specialists uh, in our company. Um, we serve over 200 global large customers uh, and we have 11 offices um, around the world. Uh, in our business, uh, it's, it's very um, important to have um, a large uh, scale of technology partners. You can um, see some of ours uh, on the screen. Um, and then also what's really important is that all of our service, all of our platforms, and also our implementation um, is, is uh, ISO certified. So, so what comes to data security, uh, et cetera, we're, we're full, fully certified. Um, if we then go maybe more into the theme of today um, on the on the slide you can see uh, digital workforce uh, history so um, on 2015 the company was founded uh, in Finland and maybe quite a traditional way of, of, of uh, doing uh, this uh, global uh, journey is that uh, then we quite quickly uh, set up companies uh, different subsidiaries uh, in the Nordics uh, and also, uh, almost from the from the beginning, we have had this sort of center of excellence uh, in Poland. Uh, we continued our our international growth uh, to um, um, UK, uh, USA, uh, and Germany in 2019, uh, and then um, acquired uh, a company last year from Ireland. So quite maybe uh, 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 this classical uh, uh, growth journey uh, for, for a company. Um, and just sort of one more uh, slide uh, regarding uh, what we are aiming for um, is, a, is a totally um, automated uh, business. And that's, that's our goal. Um, and it's not only this task automation, um, uh, but it's it's orchestrating these these uh, long running processes, end to end processes, um, and may, may, and orchestrating humans and automations uh, all in in one uh, one uh, end to end process to get our customers the the maximum uh, productivity gains. Um, and this is just sort of very fresh from the oven. Uh, Forrester does uh, these um, surveys um, uh, each year, and um, we have been ranked highest in the in the current uh, offering category um, in the in the RPA sector. So with our vision, our innovation, uh, and uh, especially our also our, our 
flexible pricing uh, is something that our customers value a lot. So really nice to be in that strong performance and, and leaders uh, segment. And that's basically shortly mm -hmm. what digital workforce is, uh, is about. And congratulations of this highest ranked, ranked <laughs> Thank you. category. And then uh, we thought um, to share some common challenges of international growth companies based on my own experience and also those discussions what we have had here at Staria with our companies and uh, customers. Um, so the main, I, I picked up a few points uh, and the one is that um, normally and typically our customers, they have lack of uh, resources. So they have very small in-house financial team or some cases uh, they have only one person who is responsible for the whole finance operation or even addition of that for example hr or other re responsibilities as well so this is huge uh, thing to cover if you are planning uh, to grow and also you need to take into account how much you can uh, handle and manage to do those things by yourself. And then uh, typically our companies, uh, they are handling the accounting in local accounting systems and they have visibility to follow the subsidiaries figures once per month. So it means that it's quite, uh, so how to say it's not so often it would be good to have a visibility during the month as well so in practice they might see some transactions when they are handling or reviewing or approving uh, for example purchase and expense reports or purchase invoices but it's quite um, a small portion of whole transaction if you don't have any visibility during the month. And then uh, when you are operating abroad, you would need uh, knowledge and expertise uh, regarding um, local requirements, for example, reporting to authorities or other applications uh, regarding VAT or taxation or whatever. So, if you don't have own resources or own employees in each country, you would need help and you need to buy those uh, services from some external service provider. And then when you are growing and you are typically have this kind of local uh, operation in place, and you start with local accounting system and some uh, accounting firm. So when you are expanding and growing, you will have uh, more partners and multiple partners who, uh, who will take care of your entities and, and your bookkeeping. But in practice, it means that you have all the time multiple partners to coordinate and give the guidance, instructions and chats. So it takes more time when you are growing and you have all the time a bigger partner network and you need to coordinate uh, and cooperate with them. So those are some, some points, but may, maybe Haney, you have some other, <laughs> yeah. other things to share with us and, and those challenges. Uh, uh, which you have faced during your journey. Yeah, thanks, Terhi. Maybe I'll just continue your list. Um, uh, I think those are all issues we've we've also faced. Um, but one of the one of the biggest challenges is uh, the the scattered system landscape, as you Terhi mentioned. Um, um, it it's very um, hard to to coordinate, uh, and um, it also uh, impacts the long delays in 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 reporting. Um, 
uh, we've had sort of nine different expense claim, purchase invoice and bookkeeping systems uh, all around the world, world um, uh, and all have had uh, different service providers um, handling those local systems. So the, so the jungle is, is quite wild. Um, uh, it's very time consuming um, getting these then Excel reports from all the countries doing, doing the consolidation then uh, quite manually uh, in, in, in system. Um, the data qualification is difficult and time consuming um, and um, the governance of the of the process itself uh, has many manual steps uh, and it is a lot of work um, and then it's very these practical things you're not able to drill down from group reports uh, into the legal entities um, and and the running costs uh, are inevitable inevitably high um, in 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 this scenario um, because you're you're um, handling very many um, systems and very many partners. So the list is long, <laughs> but quite typical uh, yeah. uh, in this um, sort of very global. Yeah, and maybe system. even a little bit longer. <laughs> mm, exactly. But maybe these are most uh, typical. All right. Thanks. And then uh, some words regarding uh, Starius Global and payroll services, global accounting and payroll services. So we have delivered these services since 2015. And we have created a one, one stop shop model, if I can say so. So it, in practice, it means that our customers, they will get this kind of dedicated named service teams uh, which consist of service manager and accounting professionals and this dedicated team will take care of all accounting uh, processes for all customers countries so when for example Haney will be in contact with our service team she has only one contact uh, point of uh, team and, and for example Haini can deliver some instructions or bookings um, regarding for example accruals or whatever and then one of our uh, accounting professional will take care of uh, those transactions and the ones at the same time, you can do those bookkeepings, uh, transactions to the all entities. So we are delivering these services using one system platforms. NetSuite is the most used. Uh, and then we can handle all accounting basic processes in the system. And also we can do group consolidation uh, even IFRS reporting uh, related uh, transactions, local cap and as well. So we have able to use this kind of multi-books functionalities in NetSuite. So all uh, will be in, in the same system. And uh, we can deliver also group level and uh, company level reporting and taking care of uh, all reporting uh, uh, matters as well to authorities and uh, tax authorities and other other obligations. So um, top of that, uh, we have developed uh, this kind of starriest best practice processes. And in practice, it means that we have one way of doing these uh, processes. And then you have scalable automated processes in place and that will help you to grow and expand your business as well from the system point of view and the service um, point of view as well and then uh, when we think about our uh, contractual um, model so you will have only one 
um, partner and Staria will be uh, responsible for all services. So you don't need to have um, multiple partners or you don't need to coordinate with multiple partners. So one uh, partner is only needed. And then uh, we have also uh, partner networks who will take care of our payroll processes in, in each country using local payroll systems as well. And then when, whenever, uh, for example, Haney would need um, any consulting uh, related any local uh, topics um, in each country. So our partner could help with those as well. So this is um, like in practice how we work with, with our customers and how the model goes. Um, then I thought it would be good to check how widely we are operating. So here we have a list of all countries uh, where we are operating and delivering services. And if we think about Haynes um, uh, digital workforce uh, countries, maybe uh, we at least we have all <laughs> countries in our service portfolio. If we go through your countries yeah. where you are operating yeah. now, yeah, um, our headquarters is in is in Finland, uh, and we're operating in all other Nordic countries as well. So Sweden. Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Uh, then we have um, the Center of Excellence in Poland. Uh, we have a small unit in Germany, uh, and then UK, Ireland, and, and USA. So quite largely scattered uh, uh, around the globe, but but fitting to to study us. Mm, <laughs> yes. And whenever uh, you might go to might go to. Um, any new location and uh, we don't have uh, services in place uh, that uh, that location so we will uh, find a partner and we will deliver services for this country as well so this is our part of our uh, service model and for example uh, right side of the slide we have those uh, coming uh, soon countries so it means that our current customers they are expanding their uh, business operation to Malaysia, Costa Rica and Thailand and, and those countries will be part of our service model as well uh, later on but the main message is that you don't need to take care of that that we are not taking care of your new countries or new locations. So we will, and maybe one addition to our partner network um, as well, that we have very um, strict uh, rules uh, for selection of uh, our partners. So in practice, it means that we are not um, like picking uh, some, some partners from the uh, different countries, but we will have very uh, strict selection um, project and, and, and a way of doing actually due diligence uh, level um, selection for those uh, partners. And um, that's very important for us and, and also our customers that we can trust and rely this uh, network as well. And I had one question before this, actually. So when we think about your uh, project, when you started to think about reorganize uh, your finance operation and having new system, how you made or what kind of differences you uh, realized during that selection that what has been very important for you when you uh, select uh, your partner. Yeah, thanks, Terhi. Uh, 
well, we started with the uh, with the efficiency and the and the sensibleness of the work and and the process itself. Um, of course, uh, system of coherency may, played a huge role to be able to to see all the entities in in one system. Um, uh, cost efficiency, of course, uh, one of the key factors. Uh, and then uh, I think what ma made the difference uh, with Staria actually was the service providing model uh, to be ha to have this one point of contact, this one centralized team, instead of having these multiple service providers um, in the uh, in the countries. Um, but it's of course uh, a combination of all of these. Mm -hmm. And then, as you can see already on the slide, that um, now we go through digital workforce system landscape, how uh, it looks before and now how it looks in the future. Yeah. So um, um, if we if we look at the history, um, the way um, our uh, international uh, growth happened was that we uh, we went to a new new country. Uh, we selected a service provider who had uh, these local uh, common tools for the finance operations. Um, uh, and then by doing the, this over and over again, uh, we've gathered uh, quite an extensive list of, of systems uh, for a company our, our size. Um, so basically each country had, ha had, had their own uh, bookkeeping systems, their own uh, travel expense systems uh, and uh, own um, invoice approval systems, um, and this is this is quite a handful to to manage. Uh, also, um, due to to um, the scale of the business, some uh, payments etc. that are, have have been uh, done manually. Um, the payroll has been and will be uh, sort of local uh, in the future. That is something that cannot be centralized uh, sort of um, system wise, but uh, there also we did this centralized approach to delivering uh, the HR and the payroll related uh, data. Uh, and then uh, what the future uh, now looks like is that uh, the, the NetSuite will be the, the uh, financial system for all of our uh, entities. Um, Severa is, is where we actually do our invoicing um, uh, and book hours, but uh, all the customer invoices will, will um, uh, go from NetSuite to, to, to our customers. Um, uh, in USA, um, it was more efficient to, to keep some of these local local systems, uh, but then integrate integrate them uh, into into NetSuite, uh, and then uh, the expense claims uh, will globally then then go to to uh, this uh, Staria hosted system Akubits. And as I mentioned, the the the. Uh, the local payroll process is now also then more more centralized. Yeah. So now you have much clear <laughs> <laughs> system yeah. lands yes. landscape. Exactly. I I would say. Uh, and some words about our uh, supporting uh, technologies. So as already mentioned, NetSuite has been the most um, uh, rely uh, relied system from our customer point of view and also uh, when we think about those um, uh, discussion and negotiation with our customers most of the cases uh, there has been NetSuite on the table and we really rely this uh, system that and those capabilities system um, point of view to support our growth customers as well and uh, we have uh, developed additional system beside as well and these kind of um, like suite apps uh, official uh, NetSuite suite apps we have um, created automated end-to-end -end AP process system called Flow 
to, to handle all AP uh, processes, uh, including also scanning. And then uh, we have developed a localization suite apps as well. So we have published 10 different localizations uh, for uh, Nordics, for Baltics, and then also Poland, Hungary, and the newest one is Croatia. So those uh, localization uh, suite apps support and enable to, to deliver uh, and fulfill those local requirements regarding uh, reporting to authorities, authorities as well. So everything can be done in NetSuite and then just deliver those reports uh, further. And then uh, one addition is our next generation PI planning tool and platform. So uh, you can use uh, your all other system data as well. So it means um, in practice that we have built in data warehouse uh, in Navilock. So you can collect all other uh, system data to the same place and then do your reporting, financial planning, budgeting and forecasting in one place. And it's uh, very easy to use and, and you have a collaborate um, or collaboration functionalities in the system as well. So it, you can chat with your management team or team members and, and give the comments uh, related those numbers and, and the figures. In addition, uh, we have selected um, some partner solution. As already mentioned, Acopis, it's one of those, but we have other as well. And you can see those on the screen. And then um, if we think about a little bit further, uh, so, and think about once more this investment um, uh, decision, uh, what kind of uh, things uh, influence to that investment uh, at digital workforce. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, uh, the first thing, of course, was the return on, on investment. So, so um, we did a quite extensive um, Excel <laughs> calculations on 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 that. Um, the project schedule was really important for us, being a, a listed company. Uh, uh, but then also we thought quite extensively uh, on the future. What will the future um, process look like? Um, what are the roles and responsibilities? Um, and then of course the, the running costs then also uh, after, after the investment itself uh, mm -hmm. has been paid. Mm -hmm. And what kind of cost savings, savings or different roles or these kind of things have you planned yeah. to receive? Yeah, uh, one of the most important thing, uh, uh, yeah, sort of uh, in addition to the cost reductions uh, uh, and, and that is the, are the maybe more sensible job descriptions, mm -hmm. the, uh, that the motivation to, to work um, and then also the clearer governance. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, with less partners, so mm -hmm. all of all of those played a role as well in the decision yeah. making. Yeah, how big is your team, like finance team, and what kind of roles you have? Yeah, uh, we're a very 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 mini team uh, of uh, three people. Um, um, so two people um, um, besides me. Um, we have a group controller and then a junior controller. So we're handling all global uh, finance uh, related things at the moment with, mm. this, with this small team. Uh, and I think all of our roles will uh, are going to change uh, sort of yeah. um, now. Exactly. Okay. And then if we think about further, so 
what to consider while investing uh, into new finance system and service provider. I think these are the tips to the audience. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, that in, in any project, uh, if we start with with managing expectations um uh, that will al already go go quite a long way um we we at least had to to manage the ex expectations of the board of directors the leadership team uh, of course then the finance team but but then the whole whole uh, company uh, what is this project all about what is the scope um uh, what is going to change and what it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So, so um, that that played a crucial role. Uh, then, of course, as I already mentioned, the, the schedule uh, is really, really important. Um, and uh, we need to we need to know and we need to communicate what happens uh, and when. Um, resourcing the, the the project uh is probably always tough uh in these sort of growing companies because the team is usually very 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 small and you have to do your daily mm. daily chores uh in addition to to this um uh project and sort of what my recommendation is that that if there isn't a a clear project manager skilled uh person in the team uh or if the bandwidth just isn't enough um use an external one that mm. will that will pay pay off um mm. did you use yes external? yes yes mm. we have used and it's been a, a, a success so i i fully <laughs> fully uh, support that decision um and then of course clear roles and responsibilities within the project there's always going to be change there's always going to be hurry uh, uh especially when when uh, going uh, closer and closer to the go live so when you have clear roles and responsibilities it's less of a less of a hassle um, and then of course project tracking and, and we need to know that how, how have we done have missed any deadlines uh, and then change management and handling in a way that, that within the project but then also mm -hmm. uh, with a wider wider scope so i believe that that as finance professionals at, at least we are doing change management all the time mm -hmm. we need to teach people that that these are now the new processes you need to stick to these and um and there's no exceptions uh in a way um and then also um i like to think that it's it's very important that that all the team finance team members and all the people uh in the company are committed to to mm -hmm. um, making the project as successful as as possible so so uh, quite many things but mm -hmm. but um i see this as as going sort of throughout the company not mm -hmm. not just um affecting affecting the, the finance professionals mm -hmm. did you create any new instructions or group policy related instructions or such. yes quite many new and also cleaned up many of the <laughs> old and outdated ones so so yeah um we wanted to and and we had to make mm. make sort of group group wide policies and uh, ways of working basically mm. yeah mm. and this meant that some people had to stop doing something and, and start doing something new so yeah. and <laughs> no special yeah. cases yeah, no, anymore yeah exactly no exceptions yeah mm. yes okay uh, very good um then uh, maybe we could check uh, the questions uh from the chat um yes i have one at least or maybe a few so which of those countries where you are operating has been the most challenging one? Um, Poland has its its peculiarities regarding external reporting and and all these governmental issues. Uh, but but the the Polish extension uh, in NetSuite uh, has has proven to be <laughs> worthy so so we've tackled all the all the difficulties there um and then of course when you when you operate in this multi-country functions there are many uh many countries where you need to have a a person from that particular country mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. to do uh many sort of governance uh mm -hmm. related issues so 
um, and and USA particularly has has its uh, very strict rules on on how foreign people can can operate there. So mm. yeah. Maybe I add some some information from my uh, and and from Staria uh, point of view and uh, based on our experience. So the most uh, difficult or challenging uh, countries has been in Eastern Europe and also Italy and Portugal. They have some specific rules as well, and China, Thailand, and uh, India has been uh, on the challenges one uh, once but if we think about the easy ones uh, so the nordics uh, countries here uh, close to us is quite easy to implement and, and and organize these practicalities and then singapore uk as well and netherlands austria uh, and then canada as well so those are the easiest one if we think about uh, easy or challenging um, countries. Oh mm, yes, I think uh, uh, we we have covered almost all questions now so far. But feel free to send uh, additional questions. Uh, we will be happy to to. Um, answer your questions. So here we have uh, our contact information. So uh, you can call or you can send an email or whatever um, to be in contact with us. And um, now it's uh, three uh, minutes uh, left still, but I think we can um, close the webinar. And I'm uh, uh, I wish uh, the great rest of the year and all the best for the upcoming uh, and coming year, new year. And Haini, would you like to say something to our audience? Yeah, th thanks for listening <laughs> and, and please uh, feel free to contact me if you if you want to um, discuss uh, these project implementations mm. or of course um, learn more about digital workforce so so be, <laughs> please feel free to to contact uh, and um, happy holidays yeah. that are starting soon exactly so thanks for your, thanks for all uh, today and let's um, wish you all the best and now time to say <laughs> bye 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 bye